Hi, this is Dimitri from Sigma One, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use CSS Grid in Bricks Builder. Now, before we begin, I see on the Facebook forums that a lot of people are having trouble figuring out the best practices of Grid or a Bricks Builder. So, what I'll do to start with is go through the setup that I use as a foundation for all of my websites. So to start with, I just added a container. I already have the same header that I used in the last tutorial. So I'll add a container under it and let's name it General Container. Layout, we'll give it a width of 100%. Let me get this out of the way. give it a width of 100%. And for now, we'll just give it a height of 65VH. Additionally, we need to add some padding because if you don't add padding, you'll get something like this where your elements just squish right up to the edge of it. So, Typically, I use some sort of responsive min-max function or clamp, but for simplicity, we'll just do 9 rem on the top, 2 rem on the right, 9 rem on the bottom, and another 2 rem on the left. And all that does is just give us a little bit of padding to work with. And now all of that's just in the new class general container. Then what I like to do, we'll create another container as a child for this. And I typically name it inner container. I already have a class for it. And I just give it whatever max width I want. And depending on the style of the website, whether it's modern, contemporary, trendy, whatever. But in this case, we'll just do 1280. Okay, and that's the basics of how I get started. Now, let's just do a dark background for now. And I'm going to center everything just so that we can see exactly what we're working with. Let's add a heading. Uh, let's give it my text light class. All the text light class really is, is you go uh, text, go to typography, and you click white. So now let's, uh, again, I want to center everything. So we have the heading. And realistically, we don't even need to put the heading in a container. I'm just showing you guys kind of the methodology that I use to move forward. Now, right now, Bricks has announced that they're going to be integrating CSS Grid in a future version. However, if it's like Oxygen Builders, while it is fantastic and great to work with, it doesn't give you the granular controls that you need when building advanced layouts. So, I have my own CSS framework I've been developing for many years, and today I'm starting to show it with you, show it to you guys, so that uh, everyone can begin to utilize the very granular tailwind CSS based layout for you. So, the old way to do it, let me just add some margin to the bottom. Typically, of course, we have a class for this, but right now, that's fine. So what people typically do right now, is you go to container, layout, we'll add three inner containers. We could go add column gap of like two rem. And there you go. Let's add a grid inner wrapper class 
and always use classes. It's always best practice. It makes everything much, much easier to replicate in, in the future. So right now, we'll just uh, give it a background color so you can see. I like this. Go grid in a wrapper again. In a wrapper again. Now, with Flexbox or the grid or the bricks Flexbox, it's nice, and you could do things like flex grow, flex shrink, or whatever. But then, when you want to start adjusting your sizes, it just kind of isn't as intuitive as most people wish it would be. So, if you want to make it like a 30, 33 by 66, you would do like this with. We would do 67%. We'd have to get rid of this one. And we're left with a 3366. But now if we want to add another one, it just is all messed up. So let's make our grid containers. We'll name this section Simple Grid Layout. We'll go to Container. And before I go too far, I've already pasted everything in here. And if you go to my blog, I'll attach it to the YouTube video. It has all of this for you to copy paste. The only catch is I require your email address and that helps us track conversions and allows us to pump out more quality content that people are interested in. So we go here. We're going to attach the grid class to it. Great. And then we'll give it, let's do three columns. And we're going to do a gap of eight. There we go. Now, doesn't look like anything happened. Let's add a container. We'll name it grid in a wrapper. Same one that we used last time. And it just works. Now, let's take a step back. I created that container earlier in the tutorial and we named it Inner Container. I like to take everything and put it inside of that inner container that we did where we have a CSS max width of 128 pixels. And this, the reason I do it is it keeps everything in line and keeps your website visually aligned on the edges. So I'll just rename this inner container and then we'll name the inside one grid wrapper. The inside one is the one with all the grid classes assigned to it. Okay. Now Let's just add some heading text. I am heading. I am heading. I am heading. And we'll just add padding to the grid inner wrapper. Layout padding. We'll do like 4M for each of them. Okay. And if we look on the front end, again, just a very simple grid layout. Now, let's say we want to make this a cool layout. Well, before I get there, we'll make it mobile responsive. So, let's actually change it so you can see it better. We'll do grid calls four, we'll get rid of the three, and we'll duplicate it one more time. Now, we're going to add one class, and this whole thing will be completely responsive. Right now on the front end, if you look at it, it's all smashed. You see, they never, the columns never break. 
So we'll do LG grid calls to. You see? Right when we get to, we're at 992 right now. The moment it gets to 991, it breaks. All of that with just one class. Now we'll take it a step further and we'll do MD grid calls one. Okay. So here we go again, four columns, automatically stacks to two columns, and then at 768, 769, 768 it's there, 767, it goes to one column. How cool is that? We have grid, grid gap, grid calls four, LG grid calls two, and MD grid calls one. And now you have a fully responsive layout for whatever it is, your service cards, your image cards that I made in the last tutorial, whatever you need, you could do it with five classes. Now, let's just duplicate the section and I'll show you other cool things you could do. Now, one of the worst things when doing content is getting the, the right size content aligned so all your boxes are the same size. With this, you don't need to do it anymore. So your customer gives you really long text for one of their services and short text for the others. You don't have to make that an issue anymore. You go, you have the class stretch, and now everything again is the same size. See, it just takes care of all the responsiveness on its own. Now, another cool thing you can do, we'll do the first one, call span two. Okay. You know what, let's do call span three. And we'll make this one call span three as well. Okay, now you've got a very cool, interesting layout with minimal effort. Again, it's fully responsive. The catch is when you start doing column spans, it breaks it just a little bit, but it's very easy to fix. You can tell it's broken because they're not perfectly aligned with one another. So all we do, because we're breaking to two columns on the large and one column on the medium, we have this spanning three columns. We'll make it span two so that this, there's the, right now this is three columns wide, but on large devices at 991 pixels, it's breaking to two columns. So what we'll do, LG call span two. And we'll do the same thing here. LG call span two. We'll save it. Right there. We've got a very cool, interesting layout. Now, when we want to make it fully broken down on medium devices, we just assign it to class MD call span one. And here we do the same thing. MD call span one. Now again, it just breaks perfectly. There's zero extra effort you have to do. I've done everything out of the box. Again, it's based off of Tailwind CSS framework. I've just retrofitted it to work with bricks. Now, let's make another. Simple grid layout. Let's make this 
advanced grid layout. And I'm just totally making stuff up here. Now, I want this one. to go down a second row. Row span two. We'll give this one another call span two. There we go. Now you've got a really cool, interesting layout with minimal effort. Let's make this one, instead of call span three, we'll give it a call span two. And we'll make this row span two. And there you go. Now, as I mentioned, it's very easy to use CSS Grid Builder and Bricks. All you have to do Go to the blog that we posted. It's attached to the video description. Put your email in, your first name in, sign up for our newsletter, and you can download our entire code from there. Once you're done, you drop it in the Brick Settings custom code, or if you're really good at plugin development, you make your own plugin and drop it in there. I'll have a cheat sheet and everything, and you're good to go. Thank you.